so I have spent, I'm not as knowledgeable as Barney is on this, but I, as you know, I supported the sequester. And the only reason I supported the sequester is because I figured Congress would never have the nerve, either Democrats or Republicans, to cut the defense budget. This is a big cut for the defense budget. So that the question is, um, what is it that we can cut? Now, you've talked about the foreign bases in Germany, and I don't know that, I mean, you may want to discuss real weapon systems, but one of the problems I think we have as progressives is it's really hard, even for people who are on the On Services Committee, to be really knowledgeable about all the weapon systems and how where all the money goes. So it would, I think it would be kind of interesting and helpful to help educate us a little bit about where you would make the cuts and how much do you think the cuts are. Great good point. Uh, two things. First of all, um, I, I, and I, I guess our difference on the sequester was you thought they would be too smart to let it happen. I spent a lot of more time with them than you did. So. <laughs> but, um, the, um, but it is, look, that's a silver lining account. How did fight? There was this fear, or this view, I think it's a reasonable one, that they would never let the military take that kind of notion. And the answer is, and that's why I didn't like the sequester, but that's a very silver lining for this cloud of the sequester that. Deficit reduction trumped military spending among some of the conservatives, and that was good. How do we save it? First of all, you reduce the number of personnel. They call it end strength. And you do that not by, that's very expensive. And you just reduce the number of people serving. You let them retire, and you, you don't fill every space. Secondly, you do significant base closing in a variety of, of places. In, uh, Germany and, and a lot of other places where we have bases. Next, the president's right about this. You whittle down the nuclear arsenal. You know, part of, you know, part of it, you don't do dumb things. Um, to get the nuclear treaty with Russia ratified in 2010, to get the votes, Obama had to agree with then Senator John Kyle to spend an additional seven or eight billion dollars to tune up the nuclear arsenal. Total waste of money. Start by throwing that one aside. Uh, you can reduce uh, the, the, the uh, maybe it's the ICBMs, shut those down, and the personnel that's, that's there. As to weapons, we have the F-35. It is a spectacular plane, but it has one defect. It has no enemy. See, now that's a very important thing in a weapon. If you're going to have a great weapon, you don't have somebody to shoot. And there's nobody remotely that it can shoot. Um, we are now planning on building literally hundreds of billions of dollars worth. Cut that in half. We still have, remember what I just said. We've had total unchallenged air superiority for 60 years. We, if we cut that in half, we would still be increasing that margin. And then there are other new weapons. It does not mean abandoning so much existing weapons as cutting back. The final point I would say is this. There's a lot of waste in the Pentagon. It's very hard to micromanage, is how it said to go on the committee. But here's one thing we do know. Being efficient is harder than being inefficient. If you have a virtually unlimited supply of money, you have no incentive to the tough decisions of efficiency. If we tell them you're now going to get $100 billion in the U.S., I know they will come up with some ways to, uh, to make do. So.